Hi everyone, my name is Emily and I'm the Young Adult Librarian at the Rock Island Public Library and today I'm here to tell you about a book that is called Shadow Shaper. So this book is about a girl named Sierra Santiago and she lives in Brooklyn and it's the beginning of the summer when the book starts and she's excited because for the first time Sierra is going to be painting a mural. Like this is the main plan she has for the summer. And she's always been an artist, she's always created art like in sketchbooks, but she's never created her own mural. Like this is a lot bigger than anything she's ever done. So she's really excited to work on this. And the mural is in her neighborhood. It's on this old abandoned building that, I mean, everyone in the neighborhood just kind of hates it. Like this company built it and then they never did anything with it. They just kind of left it to, you know, mess up the skyline almost. It's just, there's nothing in there and it's right kind of across from the junkyard where these old guys who knew Sierra's grandfather hang out. And they all used to hang out, but ever since Sierra's grandfather had a stroke, he basically, he just stays in his room. So Sierra, after a day of working on her mural, you know, she says goodbye to Manny, who's kind of, you know, he's called the Domino King, and he hangs out a lot, you know, nearby. He was the person who said, yeah, put a mural on that building. You know, I, the company did this, just left this monstrosity. So let's, let's at least put some art on here. That would, that would make it better. So Sierra, you know, he's the person who lets her in to work on the mural every day. She says goodbye to him and she goes home where she goes to check on her grandfather. And ever since her grandfather had this stroke, it's been a few years now, he can take care of himself. Like he can move around okay, but he doesn't speak. He can't speak anymore. Except on this particular day, on this summer evening, uh, when Sierra goes to say, you know, hi grandpa, how are you? You know, I'm, I'm gonna go to this party with my friends. I just wanted to make sure, you know, do you need anything before I leave? Like her mom's at home, but like Sierra's room is closer, so she's just checking on him. And her grandfather says, lo siento. And Sierra is surprised because again, her grandfather hasn't spoken in several years. So she says, Grandpa, what, what's going on? What's wrong? You know, Abuelo, what, what are you sorry for? But he just keeps doing it over and over again, apologizing. Lo siento, lo siento, lo siento. And finally, he does say a little bit more. He tells Sierra to go and find this boy named Robbie. You know, find Robbie. Uh, you need to save the shadow shapers. You know, he can tell you about this. And again, Sierra is confused. She's like, wait, Abuela, you mean Robbie from school? How do you know Robbie? He's, he's just like this boy in my class who he likes to draw. Like that is how Sierra kind of knows him. Like, oh, we both like to draw. But I mean, almost as soon as he started speaking, uh, Sierra's Abuelo goes back to sleep. So she's like, all right, that was weird. But I mean, she goes downstairs. Her best friend is already there waiting to go to this party. First big party of the summer. And Sierra's mom is like talking her friend's ear off. So, you know, she's like, come on. Let's go. And Sarah's like, Mom, um, Grandpa was just talking. Uh, he was like apologizing over and over again, talking about something called shadow shapers. And Sarah's mom just kind of dismisses the whole thing. Like, oh, he, no, I, that, that doesn't mean anything. You know, it's just, just sounds. I, I'm sure it's nothing. But of course, I mean, Sarah hearing this is like, mm, I'm not sure it's nothing, but okay, I'll follow up later. So Sarah and her best friend head to this party where they meet you know, just kind of their whole group of friends is there. And it's this party at a house where there's, you know, a decent sized yard. Like, again, this is sort of like, they're in Brooklyn, but like there are houses like, you know, with yards and this one in particular has a pool. But there's no like fence around the yard, just people, you know, walk in kind of from the sidewalk. Like, okay, you know, we're here, hi. And Sarah's main goal at this party now, after talking with her grandfather, is to talk to Robbie. So she goes over, you know, she's just, she sees him kind of like in a corner, like with his sketchbook, which is usually where you find Robbie, just kind of hanging out, drawing stuff. And so Sarah goes over to him and she says, hey, how are you? You know, how's your summer so far? Look, this is gonna sound strange, but my abuelo said I need to talk to you about something called the shadow shapers. And Robbie's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. I, I know what he's talking about. Well, it is at this point in the book. Remember, there's no fence around the house this party is happening at. So what happens is this guy 
just sort of wanders from the sidewalk into the party. Like he wanders off the street almost. And at first people think, oh, like it's some old weird drunk guy. Like, hmm, okay, well, just, just ignore him, he'll go away. But Robbie sees this and he's like, uh-oh, we, we need to go. And Sierra's like, what, what's wrong? And Robbie's like, look, I'm gonna go this way. You need to like hop over that fence and run. This guy's gonna come after us. And sure enough, he does. And like Robbie, he kind of, like he's trying to distract this thing maybe, but it doesn't work. Like it comes after Sierra. And this thing, formerly a person, like when Sierra sees it, when it gets close enough for her to see clearly, I mean, she gets why people thought, oh, drunk guy, because kind of, you know, the person's sort of shambling and not moving very well. Um, but he also looks as if he's been dead for several days, which is the case. Like this is a corpse that has come after Sierra. And it knows her name, like it's saying her name in this creepy voice, Sierra. So, I mean, Sierra at this point runs away, like, yeah, no, no, thank you. <laughs> like, just goes over the little wall, like kind of in the backyard where there's, you know, like there's a tree and there's a wall. And she hops over the wall and she runs because this thing is like, it's chasing after her. And again, like, it's not alive anymore. It's not moving super well. But, I mean, Sierra's never been chased by a dead person, so she wants to just, you know, be cautious and not get caught. And eventually she ends up at home. And the next day, she goes to work on her mural again. Um, you know, she talked to Robbie about the mural, you know, in that conversation, the brief conversation the night before, before the dead guy crashed the party. And he comes to the mural, like he comes to the junkyard and like is gonna help her, like he's, you know, gonna paint his own thing. She's painting this dragon, like this huge, beautiful dragon that's gonna cover this whole side of the building. And when Robbie arrives, Sierra's like, okay, um, you need to explain what the heck happened last night because, you know, today I find out that the guy we saw last night at the party, um, he's been missing for several days and it sure looked like he was dead, but still moving around. And Robbie's like, yeah, that's, that's what's going on basically, <laughs> unfortunately. So while they're working, uh, Robbie tells Sarah a little bit about the shadow hunters, you know, who these people are. And like he starts by saying, okay, you know that mural like over there, you can, you can see it from the junkyard. It's uh, a mural of this guy named Papa Acevedo. And Papa Acevedo had died recently. And Sierra's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I love this mural. It's beautiful. And Robbie's like, oh, thank you. I did it. And Sierra's like, wow, that's, that's amazing. You, you're really good. But there's a weird thing about the mural that Sierra has noticed in recent days. And that is, it appears that the face of Papa Acevedo is crying. Like she's noticed changes to his face, which is not how murals work, of course. You know, like the paint could drip or something, but it's not that. Like, it's like there are actual tears and the expression on this person's face has changed. So Robbie says, yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> you're right. You, you've noticed a thing that is happening. Um, basically, I have this ability, I'm, I'm a shadow shaper and if you have this ability, basically you can invite spirits into art. And it can be something big like a mural or even just like, you know, a chalk figure, like something you draw real fast. You can, you know, invite a spirit into it and it will animate it. It will give the spirit, you know, a, a form, just, you know, if only temporarily. And Sierra's like, wow, okay, this is pretty amazing. Like I, I would be more skeptical, but, you know, dead guy tried to chase us last night. And what happens as the book goes on, um, you know, Sierra is learning about the Shadow Shapers and she's hanging out with Robbie who like, you know, they're, they go to this cafe at one point where there's like music and dancing and um, her brother's band is playing there. Uh, this is uh, Sierra's older brother Juan. He's in this like kind of getting popular band in Brooklyn and they travel around. But at this place, you know, there are these beautiful paintings and I mean, they move like, when Sierra goes with Robbie. This is actually, I'm, I'm conflating two events. Like they go out a couple times and this first time, you know, they're just enjoying the art at this place and you know, they dance to the music and it's a good time. But another dead person comes after them. So when Sierra leaves, you know, she runs into her brother Juan and he's like, hey, you know, are, are you okay? What's going on? She's like, why are you here? Like, where did you come from? I thought you were at a gig. Like you, you and your band were at a concert. And he's like, well, I just, I had this feeling like you needed my help. And it's at this point, Sarah discovers her brother Juan is also a shadow shaper and just like never told her about this stuff. So at first Sierra is kind of ticked, 
because like her grandfather passed this down to her brother, but not to her. But, you know, as these secrets come out, um, it becomes more and more clear that there is a person killing off shadow shapers. Like this was never a big society of people. It was never like a large group. It was, you know, just this local group of people in Brooklyn. And Sierra's grandparents were sort of the leaders, but like her grandmother has died, her grandfather ever since he had the stroke. I mean, the group has sort of dissolved. I mean, the, the, mostly, you know, they've gone their separate ways or, you know, they're still alive and maybe hanging out, but they're not doing shadow shaper stuff anymore. But there's this one guy who learned how to shadow shape. He was an outsider and his name is Wick. And he is trying to figure out how to unite sort of different disciples of like power and spirituality in Brooklyn neighborhoods because he finds like, oh, okay, you know, there, there are these real types of magic in this community. And he decides, okay, I'm gonna put them together and just, you know, take all the power for myself. And so Wick becomes convinced that Sierra knows the secrets that, you know, the shadow shapers have concealed from him up until now and that, you know, her grandfather, he can't reveal anything, you know, he can barely speak. Of course, Sierra's problem is she just learned about shadow shaping. Like, she is just a few days into this when this guy is coming after her and trying to kill her and her friends and her family. But luckily for Sierra, uh, what she learns, uh, again, as the book goes on, she kind of gets to practice more and more with her powers. Like she and Robbie, you know, they start drawing stuff and he explains, okay, you know, even if it's just a chalk figure, really, you can like invite someone's spirit into this and then they can do things for you. You know, you can say, hey, if you could, you know, ask them to do something, they'll do it typically. You know, you're, you're not using this power to hurt people. You know, you're using it to protect yourself and your friends. And Sierra eventually learns that although she was never told about shadow shaping, when her grandmother was alive. Her grandmother did pass this power on to her. And so Sierra is very powerful and now she just needs to learn to control her abilities and you know, harness them in such a way that she can stop Wick from you know, killing her and her friends and family. And I mean, you may be thinking, oh, you know, okay, you can do this with little things, little drawings. Um, what about big stuff like murals? Yes, that does come up. That's a very cool scene in the book where, you know, the mural that Sarah has created of the dragon, it's an important part of the plot. So if you like sci-fi or fantasy, um, I mean, this is a beautiful book. It's just like this wonderful celebration of like Brooklyn and I mean, Sierra and her family, they're Puerto Rican. Uh, it's, you know, celebrating art and family and friendship, but it's also, you know, it, it's urban fantasy, I guess I would say, which, you know, it, fantasy taking place now. Like, I think when people hear fantasy, they think, oh, it's like, you know, in a fantasy land with like horses and wizards. Uh, urban fantasy typically is modern and it's like, yeah, we, we have cell phones and things. <laughs> like, we're, we, we live in a city typically and, you know, we have modern conveniences, but also we're learning to do magic. So the first book takes place in the summer. Like this is all happening kind of at the beginning of Sierra's summer vacation. And the next book, uh, which you get an excerpt at the end of the first, uh, starts in the fall. So, you know, it's Sierra and her friends have gone back to school, but there's somebody at their school who has these weird playing cards. And Sierra just is getting a bad vibe from this. Like, okay, what, what are these cards about? You know, what, what kind of magic does this other person have? And is she going to try and use it against us? You know, my, my kind of newly grown group of shadow shapers. So, Check it out. This book is available as an ebook, I think, through Access 360 or Libby. Uh, you can listen to all three books, though, through Hoopla. All the audiobooks are right there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.